Hi, I'm James Kyle. Um, I'm one of the members of the Babel team. Um, uh, by day, I'm an engineer at Cloudflare. Um, uh, you should all follow me at the James Kyle. Um, I need to get more followers than Sam again. Um, he passed me today, and that's the problem. Uh, I have two projects I want to talk quickly about. Uh, the first one is the handbook that I just published. Um, it's on Babel. Uh, it explains everything, how to set up and configure Babel, to how to write your own plugins for Babel. Uh, it's great. Uh, I should know. I wrote it. Um, so you can go and read it at that URL. Uh, and my talk is going to overlap with a lot of the content of the plugin side of things. Uh, so if something doesn't make sense to you, um, I highly suggest reading it. Uh, the second project is for a more personal mission of mine. Um, us English speakers are a bit spoiled with all of the English documentation in programming. It's like what everything is written in. Um, and this is the problem for 30% of Babel users and like 40% of Lodash users and a huge percentage of all these projects. Uh, so I want to get more docs translated. Uh, and I wrote this guide on how to do that. Um, and if you run an open source project, I highly recommend you take 20 minutes and set this up. Uh, the guide explains how to crowdsource it, so it's pretty cool. So now for the actual talk, uh, which against better judgment, I've decided to title it uh, Babel Sucks. Um, uh, or for short, BS. Um, we'll get into why it sucks later, um, but for now, let's just talk about what it is. Uh, so Babel is a general purpose JavaScript compiler specializing, as Jay mentioned, in transforming ES2015 to ES5 uh, so that people can use the latest syntax today. Um, and people are building all sorts of crazy stuff with it. Um, and I can't talk about some of the projects because they're not published yet, but they're pretty cool. Um, but what does it mean for Babel to be a compiler? Uh, compiler is just this thing that takes high level code uh, written in the high level language to a lower level language. Sometimes it's the same language, just compiling it down. Like uh, Babel will compile ES2015 to ES5. Um, uh, and there's tons of different compilers uh, that going along the same language, it's called a source to source compiler or a transpiler. Uh, and there's so many different types. I tried getting a list of all the different types, and it was just overwhelming, and I couldn't understand the difference between a lot of them. Uh, basically, anytime someone did anything different, they were like, boom, I've invented a new type of compiler, and now all you computer science students need to learn it. Um, the differences are pretty minor, um, <laughs> generally. Uh, they do this, a lot of the same operations, just in like four different things. Um, so, uh, and Babel is a very modern design of a compiler, and they're all very similar. Uh, so if you've done any work with a compiler in the last 10 years, you'll feel right at home. Um, another important thing to mention is uh, static analysis. Uh, basically, it just means analyzing code without actually executing it. Um, and you can use this for all sorts of things, and you do use it uh, for linting, code highlighting, code transformation, optimization, minification, like tons and tons of things. Uh, and just tools that help make better program. Um, before we get into how Babel works, I need to talk about this thing called an AST, uh, which is short for Abstract <laughs> Syntax Tree. Basically, they are a way of a compiler to describe code. Uh, they can be traversed and manipulated and do all sorts of compilery things. Um, so let's take an example. Uh, if we as dumb humans uh, would describe this code, we'd say there's a function named square with a single parameter n that takes it and multiplies n times n and returns the result. But when a compiler describes this code, it looks something like this. Here we could see the same function declaration named square with a single parameter n and a body that returns a turn statement that has a binary expression with a multiplication operator with n on the left side and n on the right. You know, it makes the animation finish. Uh, and using a JavaScript object, it looks like this. Sorry. Oh, okay. I have no other animations, but thanks. Uh, 
And if you use, if you look at this AST structure, you'll notice each part looks very similar. Um, every item in the program has its own type, like function declaration, identifier, or binary expression. Uh, these are type of AST nodes. Uh, and an AST can just be a single node, or it could be hundreds or thousands of nodes. Uh, and together, they're able to describe the syntax of a program, and that could be used for stack analysis. Uh, and they all have the same basic interface. Uh, it's just an object that has a type field, which is a string, uh, that has the type of this node that describes other fields that it needs to have. Uh, and yeah. <coughs> so for example, a function declaration would define fields for an ID, an array of params, and a body, which is just the content of that function. Uh, now that we know about ASTs, we can talk about the three primary stages of Babel which are parsing, transforming, and generating. The parse stage takes in code and outputs an AST. There are two phases of parsing in Babel. It's lexical analysis and syntactic analysis. Lexical analysis will take a string of code and turn it into an array of tokens. You can think of tokens as a flat array of pieces of language syntax. So for the program n times n, you would get these tokens. Look at the type field of the token, you see it's actually an object this time, and the value is just like the like actual code itself, um, broken up into little tiny pieces. Uh, and if we look at the type object in that uh, token, uh, we see a ton of different properties that describe the token, uh, uh, and we'll give later phases some contextual information. Uh, syntactic analysis will take that array of tokens and turn it into an AST. It's moving from a flat structure to like a deeply nested structure. Uh, and using the information, the tokens, this phrase will reformat them into the AST that represents the structure of the code uh, in a way that makes it easier to work with. The next stage is transforming. In this stage, Babel will take an AST, traverse through it, adding and updating and removing nodes as it goes along. Uh, and this is the most part, the most complex part of Babel or really any compiler. Um, this is where Babel does most of its work. Uh, the last stage is generation. Uh, th in this stage, it takes that transformed AST uh, and it just turns it back into a string of code. Uh, so if you want to transform an AST, you have to traverse the tree recursively. Say we have this function declaration, it has a few properties, ID, params, body. Uh, so we begin to visit, visit each of those nodes. Uh, we go to the ID and we find an identifier named square. Since it's an identifier, we know it doesn't have any more children, uh, so we move on. Uh, next, we see params, which is just another ident or it's an array of uh, identifiers, which has no children, so we move on. Uh, last property uh, is function declaration. Uh, on function declaration is body. Uh, so we look at that and we find a block statement. Uh, and block statements have a body, uh, which are an array of statements. So we look at that. Uh, and now we find a uh, return statement. Uh, and the return statement has an argument. And we go to that argument and we find a binary expression. Uh, and here you'll see that there is an operator. Uh, and this isn't a node. Um, it, it's just a property that describes the type of binary expression. Uh, but there is the left and right nodes. Uh, and here, in this case, it's just an identifier on the left and an identifier on the right. Uh, when we talk about going to a node, uh, we're actually talking about visiting them. Uh, and the reason I use this word is because there's a like, computer science -y thing called a visitor. Um, and you'll see it across most compilers. Um, uh, visitors are a pattern used in AST, AST traversal across all languages. Uh, basically, they are an object with methods defined uh, for accepting particular node types in that tree. Uh, this is a basic visitor uh, that, when used during a traversal, will call the identifier method for every identifier in that tree. So with this code, identifier will be called four times with each identifier with a square and then the three ends. Uh, these are called on node enter. Uh, however, there is the possibility of calling a visitor on exit as well. 
Let's go back to the tree structure before. I've simplified it a bit uh, so it's just the nodes, uh, just the types of nodes. Um, and we start by entering the function declaration, uh, which we see has other things inside of it. So we enter the identifier. And now we've hit the end of a branch, because the identifier doesn't have any children. So we then exit the identifier as well. Uh, and we enter the next identifier and exit again, and then we enter the block statement, enter the return statement, enter the binary expression, enter the identifier, exit the identifier, enter the next identifier, exit again, and exit all the way back up. So when creating a visitor, you have two op opportunities to visit a node, on enter and on exit. Uh, an AST generally has many types of nodes. But how do these nodes relate to each other? We could have one giant mutable object that you manipulate and have full access to, uh, or we can simplify this with paths. A path is simply an object with a representation of a link between two separate nodes. For example, if we take the following node, function declaration and identifier, uh, and represent the identifier as a path, it looks something like this. We have a parent, which is the function declaration, and a node, which is the identifier. Uh, the path also has a ton of extra metadata uh, about the contents of the path, as well as many, many, many methods about uh, for uh, adding, updating, removing, uh, and all sorts of crazy stuff uh, with a single path. Uh, won't get into any of those, uh, but in a sense, paths are this reactive representation uh, of a node's position in a tree, uh, along with all information about the node. Uh, when you, ever you call a method that modifies the tree, this information is updated. And Babel manages all this for you, so working with nodes uh, is as easy and stateless as possible. So when you have an ident uh, a visitor that has an identifier method, you're actually visiting the path and not the node. In this way, you're working with the reactive representation of a node rather than the node itself. So next, let's introduce the concept of a scope. Uh, JavaScript has lexical scoping, uh, as well as all sorts of complicated uh, new rules of multiple scoping types. Uh, and it's just a tree structure where each block creates a new scope. Uh, so you can have stuff on the global scope and nest it at function levels and other things. Um, so whenever you create a reference, whether it be a variable, a function, a class, param, import, label, tons of things, uh, it belongs to the current scope. Uh, code within a deeper scope may reference code from a higher scope, uh, and you can have things of the same name in different scopes. Uh, so when writing a transform, we want to be wary of scope. Uh, we want to make sure that while tra uh, transforming the AST, we're not breaking how scopes work. Um, uh, so we need a representation for this. Um, and this is just how we represent it. You give it a, a path uh, and a parent block um, and a parent scope. Uh, and it, it collects information about uh, that particular scope. Uh, and collects the bindings of the scope. And bindings are references uh, to a particular scope. Um, uh, the binding doesn't include references. Uh, you can have references to a binding, uh, but it's only the initial creation uh, that is the actual binding itself. Uh, and it looks like this. Uh, you get an identifier node, because every binding has to have an ID. Um, and a scope that the binding belongs to, and information about the references, and the number of them, and if it's treated as a constant or not. Uh, even if you're using it as plain variables, uh, without even like ES 2015 constants, we can actually tell if you're using it as a constant, and this is how like linters are able to tell. Um, yeah. Uh, so Babel is actually a ton of different modules. Uh, the Babel repository has a packages folder with 117 different modules. Uh, but I only want to focus on one of them for now. I won't go through all 117. Um, uh, Babel types is a very small but very important module. 
Uh, it's a Lodash-esque type utility library uh, that defines all of the AST nodes uh, and has uh, all these utility methods around it uh, related to building, validating, and converting AST nodes. Uh, and it's useful for cleaning up AST logic. Uh, so a single node definition looks like this. Uh, you can see we're defining a new type, which is binary expression, uh, describing the builder uh, method, defining validation, which fields to visit, and some aliases. Uh, and you can find all of these definitions in the Babel types code. Uh, and there's a doc on it. Uh, you'll notice that the above definition has a property for the builder method, uh, which uh, the builder method for this binary expression, which is operator left and then right, just looks like this. So it's just the lowercase version of the AS, or the node type uh, with those params in order that are in the definition. Uh, and when you call this, you get just an AST that looks like this. Um, and then if you were to generate that code back out, it would just look like this. Um, so you can see the AST tends to be much larger than the generate code, or it always is. Um, so there are a lot of other methods inside of battle types, uh, but that's all you really need to know for now. Uh, and that's Babel. That's how it works from the ground up, and it's each of the major modules. Uh, and guess what? It sucks. It all sucks. Um, all that stuff we went over, it doesn't do anything. Uh, when you run Babel, it runs through lexical analysis to create tokens, syntactic analysis to create an AST, which traverses using nodes, paths, scopes, bindings, builders, validators, and all of the rest before generating the code back out. Uh, all to do absolutely nothing. Uh, and um, actually, Babel doesn't do anything in the least efficient way possible. Uh, in fact, I wrote an optimized version of it, which is just this. Uh, and if you don't like semicolons, it's this. Uh, and if you're a fan of ES2015, there's that. Uh, and the reason for this is plugins. And all of the real functionality in Babel lives in plugins. Uh, it's where we do all of the transformation of ES2015, and it's where like React code gets compiled and flow and all of these different things that the community has built. Uh, in fact, Babel is only as good as the ecosystem built around it. Without that, it's totally useless. Um, so now it comes down to you. So I'm going to guide you through walking or building your very own Babel plugin. Uh, I'm not going to have you all pull out your laptops and uh, npm install Babel. I think we'd take out the internet. Um, we might just take out Google. Um, doing that, um, which would be bad. Uh, we'll start off with a function that gets past the current Babel object. Uh, and since you'll be using it so often, uh, you'll want to grab Babel types uh, just like that. Uh, next, we would just return an object with a property visitor, uh, and that's the primary visitor of our plugin. Uh, now that we have the basic structure of a plugin, and let's figure out what we want to do. So here is our source code. We have an identifier, foo, uh, strict equals bar, which we turn into an AST form and we get a binary expression with strict equals operator with foo identifier on the left and a bar operator on the right. Um, and then we go back to our plugin uh, and now we want to visit that binary expression. So we add a binary expression visitor method, and this gets past the path of any binary expression in our program. Uh, but we don't want to visit every single one of them, just the one that are strict equals. So we narrow it down by going to path node operator, uh, and then we check that, that uh, if it does not equal the strict equals operator, we just return and move on. Uh, but now, when we do have just these strict equals ones, uh, we're going to start replacing, uh, modifying the AST. Uh, we'll start by replacing the node on the left side with a new identifier 
uh, which we're setting to uh, Sebastian McKenzie's username, Sebmic. Um, and we run that, and we just get Sebmic equals bar. Uh, and now we want to replace bar because that doesn't make any sense. So we just replace it with a new one, and we run that again, and we get Seb equals a dork, um, which is true. Um, and now that's it. We've written our own Babel plugin. Uh, and we can publish the NPM and get all the downloads and the stars on GitHub and feel great about our lives. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's the entire thing right there. And it's pretty small. It's not the most complex one in the world. Uh, but it should be pretty easy to follow. Um, and I, we, we, there's been a lot of time spent into making sure that Babel has an expressive API uh, and make sure that things are stateless so that you have uh, good plugins. So yeah, <coughs> that is my talk on Babel. <laughs>